Hello, my name is Bob Brown, and it's my privilege to host this show, which is based on the reality that Westboro is a great town filled with interesting people. Many of them are long-term residents who have so many memories and stories about life in Westboro in days gone past. And so your local cable station, Westboro TV, has initiated this series of programs which are designed to reflect upon life in earlier days and to possibly make suggestions about how we can improve life in this fine town for the future. The title of these programs that we've done over the months has been My Westboro Story. And today, we not only have a story of, of, of one individual, but we want to talk about the history of this town the way it was some years ago. The magic of this town when I came to it in 1957 was the number of farms. This was a, really an agricultural community. It isn't that anymore. As mm -hmm. we go around, we can't find that many more that are substantial farms. But it's important for the historical record to understand how this town was divided up by farms. And so, Norm Bowman, a farmer here from, from in Westboro, farmed for many, many years, is here to help us do that. And what we're going to do is just quietly go around the town, section by section, and talk about the farms that were in each area that we can either remember from Norm's background or from my memory or from Chris's book, Chris Allen's book on the beaten path, which talks about a lot of the farms. One interesting statistic is that in 1865, there were 184 farms in this community. There were 4,205 acres devoted to farmland. There were 885 milk cows. There were 276 horses. And there were 151 oxen. Now, to talk about that today, people would under not understand what we're talking about because we don't see any of that. So what we want to do is go back in history a little bit, reminisce a little bit about the farms here in town, and we'll start by just asking Norm if he'd just describe his farm, where it was, and what his products were. Well, we were located on Oak Street, just below the Lyman School, and the state hospital was on the back side of us. We milked cows. We had a couple hundred hens, run a retail egg route in Worcester, and raised some vegetables in the summertime. Great. And how long were you on the farm, Norm? Well, I started milking cows in 1925. Did you really? Great. And I milked till 1970. Yeah. That must have been an awful wrench when you had to give it up. It was. But I was alone the last year with a 13-year-old nephew helping me. Yeah. We cut 600 ton of feed. Wow. I had a barn full of cows. I had 50 head at the time. Did you really? Milked them morning and night, feed them. Wow. So... It was all. How many acres did you have? Well, I only had 40 acres, but I rented about 120 or so around the town. Yeah. Matter of fact, I rented all along Lyman Street. <coughs> I rented the farm where uh, the school is on East Main Street. I farmed oh. that for about 20 years. Yeah. I farmed some down Route 9. My uncle's land. And Great. Things like that. Yeah. And I had pasture land up back that belonged to the wildlife that we cooperated with. And I helped maintain that use of it. Great. So that was up on the Lima School side of things? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I remember that. I think I down remember. Down in back. Yeah. Back yeah. of the piggery down there. Yeah. So we had your farm on Oak Street. There was another farm on Oak Street, too, wasn't there? Oh. Friends? There's quite a few of them along there. Ralph France, he was poultry and vegetables. Okay. And he had, uh, oh, I would guess, say 2,000 land hens were hatching eggs for cobs down Littleton. Hmm. And he had eggs for his retail egg route and uh, raised vegetables. And how big a farm did he have? Not too big. I would say uh, eight or ten acres. Hmm. I'm not sure. I can't picture where that was. Well, it's where the trailer park is now. Oh, okay. And right across the street from his house. Mm -hmm. His house is now. Yeah, okay. So, and then you go over the, the hill and there's my Uncle Charlie's farm. And, of course, he died and... 
1934, I think it was. Now, which hill? We, we, on Oak Street. On Oak Street, okay. All right. You keep going down. Now, there's another farm that way back when we were kids in school was right where the insurance office is. Oh, yeah, the corner. He just had a barn there. Yeah. A colored man. I can remember him. I don't remember his name. All I can remember that it might have been Reynolds or something like that. Yeah. I don't know whether you have any record. I don't have any record of that, no. That was taken down when they put the road in. Okay. Yeah, that's not here at all. As I say, the, the ones I've got are things, the farms that I remember when, when my wife and I came to Westboro in 1957. I came working in the church, at, in, the, in the Congregational Church, and we were here just on weekends to start with, but we always would take a ride around town on Sundays yeah. between activities and look at farms. And Well, so I, I would say probably 1930, 31, 32, okay. they took the barn out of there All right. because of, they widened the road. Yeah. Now, if we go across R Route 9, you had some farms on the uh, McGuffick's Greenhouse. McGuffick's Greenhouse and uh, Gribble's Poultry Farm. Gribble's, right. Okay, I have him. Lyman Street, right. And that was chickens. Yeah. Okay. Now, before you cross Route 9, you had Mason Taft on the corner of Lyman Street and Route 9. Okay. Is that where the... Gas station is now? Um, Burger King. Burger King, oh, that side, okay. That's where the Burger King is. Yeah. And you go down the road another seven or 800 yards, and it was my Uncle Al, had a small dairy farm and a poultry and vegetables. And he did more peddling in Worcester than they used to go in by horse and buggy every Wednesday. Wow. The two men. Yeah. That was way back in, I don't remember the year that they stopped doing it. Now, you mentioned that you milk cows. Just to digress for a moment, Westboro became known, at least in the history book, as being really a, a very important milk town. Yeah. You had the train came into town primarily to haul milk into Boston, correct? I have been to the train station many, many days. I bet. And as I got older... Oh, I forget now, but it was probably 16, 17. It was my job on the weekend. And we called my father's and my two uncles and milk. Yeah. Because back then, nobody made a lot of milk. They didn't have too many cows on the average. Yeah. And so it wasn't a big job. But uh, we used to meet the train, or bring it there, and the... As I remember, they dropped the empties off on the way to Worcester, and you brought your milk there, and they picked it up on the way back. How did you keep it cool? I mean, how did you, how did you get into Boston cool? Well, it stayed cool for as long as it didn't stay there long enough, and you get a bunch of them together okay. and uh, keep them covered. Big metal cans? Oh, yeah. yeah. Body quart jugs. Okay. So. That train had to move along to get it in there yeah. before it became cottage cheese or something. And I, I don't remember... It was too young then to remember just how long, but they didn't sit there long before the train came back from Worcester. Yeah. So. Did that go every day? Did the every day. Every day. Seven days a week. Is that right? That's something. Yeah. Yeah. Great. You don't stop milking cows, so you. No, that's right. And you went from my uncle's, of course, McGuffin's greenhouse was across the way. Yeah. And you went down the road just a little ways, and you had Fraser's who raised poultry. Another chicken place, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you go up, follow Route 9 up there, and you had Katunis's. Now, is that Walter's family? Walter's father. Is that right? Had cows there. Did he really? Yeah. And uh, then you went on down further. It was Carl Freiburg. Oh, yeah. On okay. the same side of the road. Right, yeah. You went across the road, you had the fennel farm, was milking cows. And then just beyond that was Apple Mary's Apple Orchard. Now, I, now uh, I don't know how many people remember her when she used to come down. She lived out by the reservoir. Yeah. You know, I knew that because it was a funny story, but they, they apparently took gravel out of there for the toll road at some point. Oh, yeah. and made big holes. 
And there was a fellow that I was very friendly with who was a marine diver, skin diver. And he taught um, Paul O'Neill and me and um, several other guys, Danny Campion, to skin dive. And we used to skin dive in Apple Mary's pond. <laughs> so that, I, knew her, I knew about a little bit about Apple Mary, but yeah. I didn't realize she was out on this other side of town. Yeah, she had an apple orchard and apples and peaches up on just beyond the Fenner Farm up on Route 9. Is that something? Wow. And she used to drive down through there, driving the tractor and sprayer, and go down there and spray her trees. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So. Now, do you, going up to, toward Mass Electric or National Grid now, whatever that building is, was there any farm up in there? Well, it was Cal Freiburg's. That's Freiburg's, okay. Right. Yeah. And then if we got down behind that, we'd get down to, uh, on, on Flanders Road. Yeah. Who did we have down there? You had... Well, the first one was Russ Warren. Okay. And then you went down further and was... Louis Zaretti. Louis Zaretti, that's the one I was thinking about. Okay. Right. And Jack Walkup. Walkup, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, when you come back out, you get down the Southboro Road. Yeah. You had Frank Poskett. You had Henry Brady. Right. And the Armenian family was down Walker Street. I can't remember their name. Was it Maljanian? It wasn't Maljanian. It was, was it um, Nordigan? Sackus Kajillian's father was in him for a while, and okay. then he went up on the Route 9 yeah. in the poultry business. Okay, yeah. And I can't remember the fellow's name. <coughs> yeah. The kids used to ride the school bus with us. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's, that's fascinating. Now, the people... You mentioned Jack Walkup. His his farm, a good portion of that became known as the that open space now. That's that's the that uh, walking trails and yeah, beautiful beautiful spot for walking up off Flanders Road. People ought to go there if they haven't been there before. It's a beautiful piece of land. Of course, there was the humans up on yeah, and Henry Brady. Yeah, now there were several humans. There was Howdy. There was Eddie Ray, and Ray were Eddie together. Eddie and Ray, right. Howdy was alone down further. Down there. And there was a Frank Warburton down there right. with poultry. That's where the green or the uh, greenhouse is now, right? Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I remember Poskett's down in there. And you can get way back East Main Street. Yeah, B. Howard Fay had a few cows. Yeah, and he was our dairy man. Well, that was his son. Son, okay. B. Howard retired from, he used to deliver the rural mail route. Yes. For years. Right. And after he retired, he had a few cows. But his son took over the mail route, right? No. Pete? Oh, well, that's Kendall's son. Okay. You know Kendall's what? the one that delivered the milk. Okay. That's right, and delivered the milk. All right. He yes. had a farm up on West Main Street. Right. Yeah, beautiful farm up there. Yeah. Then he had his dairy down there downtown. on East Main Street. East Main Street, right. Yeah, but yeah. His, his father had a few cows too. Yeah. After he retired from the postal service. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can remember them very well. My kids couldn't understand how that milk could push the cap off the top of the bottle when it froze. That was before <laughs> they all marginalized. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So then you go back, you go down. South Street, you had the Harveys. Yeah. And the old Baldwin farm up on the hill. Yeah. And Dave Goodall had cows down there for a few years. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is going out toward Hopkinton. Yeah, out there by the old mill somewhere. Right. And uh, all the farmland on the left hand, right hand side was either Harvey or. Well, it was Harvey, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, After they got beyond. Uh, uh, the Bowl Baldwin Farm, yeah, which went into something else afterwards. I've forgotten what. Yeah. So it's fascinating. And then then uh, you go out by the reservoir. You had Crosman's. Yeah. And then Roy's bought that farm. Ray, R Raymond, Raymond, Raymond Roy. Roy. Yeah. Right. So that was a 
that was, if you went up Ruggles Street to the top of the hill and swung around, there was a swale in there in that farmland of his that had the most magnificent drifts of snow in the wintertime. Oh, yeah? When the, when the wind would blow, it made just, my wife and I used to just go up there and sit and look at the marvelous features. It was like, it was like somebody had carved out. Just the out. way the wind yeah. blew. Yeah, it was fascinating. Yeah. Raymond so. took a lot of kids from Lyman School to work on his farm. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah. Good guy. And then... Well, when you go from there, you go over to Adams Street, and you head to Gilmore's. Right. Same and mountain. the Adamses. Yeah. Of course, the Gilmore's had a few cows, and they had apple orchards. Right. Fay Mountain. And... Uh, Was it Francis Adams? I saw Adams? by the book where they had pigs up there one time, but I never remember that. Uh, I don't remember. I, all I remember is the orchard. I don't remember any cows. He had cows when I was Did growing he? up. Yeah. Now, was, when you say Adams, was it Francis Adams? Francis Adams. Yeah. Now, he was, he t has a, had a whole bunch of land on, on Adams Street, which he was, which one time this town was considering building a school on, but they decided not to. Was that his or was that Libby's? Well, I guess Libby's I guess was you're right. right. Down. You're right. You're Libby's right. Libby's was right down That's in the right. corner there. That's right. Of the corner of Adams Street. I thought that was the You're lot. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I, I remember Francis being up further up the hill. Yeah, he's up on the next bend. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was quite a farmer. I remember him quite well. Yeah. And then Bill Libby, as you mentioned. Yeah. Then you, of course you had uh, Metagets along on the same road. Going out there. Yeah. Now, McTaggers was, was apples, right? Apples, yeah. Yeah. And Faze was out beyond him. Right. Yeah. And then you get over on the West Main, what is it? That's the Grafton Road, I guess. Route 30, Where the yeah. nurses were. Yeah. And Andrews had a big farm over there. Right. Now, the nurse farm was one of the oldest in town, right? Yeah, I think it was one of the oldest. Yeah, I think they date back almost to revolutionary time. I'm not, I'm not positive about that, but it seems to me they've been there a long, long time. Of course, my father's farm, well, I'm the fourth generation. <coughs> Third generation. Third generation? Is that yeah. right? Great. I got four generations in town since then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we went by down West Main Street, Wards. Yes, I was going to say Jim Ward. Jim Wards, Al Dunn. Yeah. And Wilkinson's in there at the Sprague Farm. That's right. To go back to Jim Ward's a bit now. Isn't that land, the piece of land that the town has just picked up from a developer who gave it to the town? In lieu of the you know, I have wondered where that piece of land was because I did. You go out East Main Street now. Oh, uh, I know the Ward Farm, but yeah, but you know, there's a there's a sign, a little sign that talks about the park. It's it's a driveway that just goes up in the back there, and it's a beautiful piece of land. It stretches right down to Mill Pond. Oh yeah, and it looked like it was. Well, fun. when we were kids, we used to get down in there fishing. I would think so. Because I was friendly with. Carl Sprague was my one of my school chums. We used to get down there fishing down back through Ward's yeah. Land. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I remember Jim. Yeah, so you're doing well, Norm. You're doing very, very well. You're you're going faster than I can go here. There was a family up on Adam Street named Breedlove too. Breedlove. Yes. Uh, was that beyond Francis's? Yeah. Okay. Now, he went there after he left the Baldwin farm. Okay. And I think he had poultry, and I'm not sure what else. I haven't got him down. I, that's one I miss. That's one I miss. You know, that's... I got him down twice, so... He, he run the, uh, the Baldwin farm after Carl Henry. Oh, okay. You remember Carl Henry? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Selectman. Yep. Carl Henry had a small orchard out on Milk Street there right. for, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I knew where that was. I, I remember that farm. 
Now, when you get down let's go over and let's go step and back up just a little bit on, on to the Aronson farm. The Aronson farm there on West Main was right, school. That's the one that was destroyed by the in the tornado, yeah. lost loss of life, and that that was, must have been a beautiful farm. Of course, it was all gone when I came into town, but I heard so many well, stories. Well, I knew it growing up. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah. The interesting part for us was we lived on Forbes Street, which is two couple streets over from the farm. And when my wife was feeding the kids, the kids would be sitting in a high chair. If they looked in the oven door, they could see the cows up in Aronson's farm up in the Oh, hill. they could. Yeah. The reflection. Yeah. It was yeah. fascinating. They look at the cows. Yeah. So that that was a beautiful pasture up in there. So of course in later years, George Nichols had cows on Right. Yeah, okay. Mill Road. Mill Road, that's right. And uh, Eddie Dunn was out the end of Mill Road. Right. And Deodis was on the Mill Road. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. Now, some of that land must have been taken when they built the Mill Pond, right? Because Mill Pond was George Nichols' land. That was his land? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. And there was Goff up on Fisher Street. Goff, yeah, right. And the Marshalls. And what, what did Goff do? I knew he had the, the rat farm. He had cows. He had cows. Oh, he had cows before the rat farm. Okay. Yeah, he did. Okay. I he just remember the rat farm. And he milked cows there. Matter of fact, he was uh, <coughs> milking cows at the time of the tornado. Was he? Wow. So the, the rat business all came after the tornado. Okay. Well, that's all I knew about it. That's, I can yeah. remember people saying, go see the rat farm, and I didn't know what they're talking yeah. about. And the marshals were way up the end of Fisher Street. Yeah, Arch Street, yep. And, of course, they had dairy, poultry, and vegetables, and raised a lot of turkeys. And Did they really? Yeah. Yeah. And they had Bowman's up, I'm just jumping around now, you had um, Ellis up on Bowman Street, right? Bill Ellis? Bill Ellis. I think I did. I, I get him or did I miss him? I missed he's him. Up, he's on, up on Bowman Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I knew Bill Wall, too. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, I missed him. And I think they still, I think Kenny still runs a couple of head of capital up there. Just yeah, I talked to him the other day at the men's club. Yeah, good. Good guy. He's got three beef cows. Yeah. Yeah. Good to keep his hand in there. Of course, it was Andrews out there with his pig farm. Right, right. I think I can remember. Didn't they used to go around town picking up the garbage? He did. He had a garbage contract for years. Yeah, I think in I remember. town here. Yeah. yeah, I think I still have one of his old garbage pails in my backyard. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. They used to do different back then. Yeah, couldn't do that and, anymore. And uh, Bob McGorry had pigs up, way up, off of Fisher Street. That's right. Bob McGorry, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you got down, you had barbarians on. Now, what did Red, did, was it, Red just had truck farm, right? Or did yeah. he have cows? No, he didn't have cows, he just truck vegetables. Farm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You got out on the turnpike, you had the Caprians right. and the turkeys. Turkey farm, right? Yeah, and across the street you had, was, what was the name of the? the, the well, across there, uh, where the big uh, housing thing is, memory goes for me. Yeah, that. But I, that was uh, that was another Caprian. Was it? Yeah. He was in vegetables for a long time. Yeah, I'm trying to think. That. I thought there was another one. A fellow who had a nursery. A nursery. Right on the corner. Just now, the Breezy Hill Nursery is somewhere in town, and I can't remember just where they were loaded. Okay? Yeah. I don't have it here. I can't. I'm, not, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Don't have it. Well, you've done real well. Where else we got? Right. You get down the road in Kajillions. Okay. He had poultry and vegetables. Yeah. He used to go into Worcester with his horse and vegetables in the early in the morning. 
that was back before cars too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, some of the time it was before they, they built Route 9 as it is today. <laughs> yeah. And you got over on uh, Park Street, you had a little walker. Yeah, right. That big farm. Yeah. Big farm. Well, I can't even read my own writing. Well, you've done very, very well. It was Fennel's on uh, Milk Street. I don't want to... He had a few cows, Did he? but he got killed by the trolley train on Park Street. Oh, wow. When I was little. Hmm. Yeah, the horse ran on him and killed everybody. Wow. Yeah, so, and George Hero milked a few cows. Yes, right. On, used to bottle the milk and sell raw milk. Yeah. Oh, the name I was looking for before was Bogasians. Didn't... Bogasian. Bogasian. Well, that's, uh, isn't that the one that bought Brigham Squinos? You could be right. You could be right. I don't, I don't have any history for it at all. It's just, it was a name that came in the book, and I just copied it down. I don't know anything yes, about it. Yes, he bought Brigham's Greenhouse. I think that was the fellow's name. And there was Jack Straw Gardens on Bowman Street. Well, that was, I think that was just small flower plants and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I, I, think I, was, don't, I, think was, I don't remember that. I think it was right down near where the conservation area is now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm just, I don't know like that for sure. That one's, that one's gone for me. Now, was Mugford, that, Mug, was, that was the that Warburton. That was down, West Main, down East Main Street. But was he, he bought it after Warburton? He was the next place beyond Warburton. Okay. So if I remember, two right. Two separate places? Okay. Yeah. Of course, we had Laurel West on Milk Street, too. Connor Miss Milk and Park had poultry. Mm -hmm. And you had Baptiste up on Bowman Street? Yes, he was in the vegetable business. Was he? I haven't got him down. And uh, Lance had some beef cows. Yeah, right. Out on Ruggle Street. Right, yeah. And Bert Adams? Yes, I haven't got him either. He had beef cows. Did he really? Yeah. Beautiful place. Yeah, that was a... And there was a Smith on Bowman Street. Well, yes. what he had some sheep. I don't know what he had anymore. Okay. And I didn't even write him down. Yeah. And I still know him, too. Is that right? Hey, you better write it down. <laughs> There was another interesting statistic in in the book that talked about the amount of amount of milk you shipped. And it was twenty five hundred cans of milk shipped every day. Was it that many? Twenty five hundred cans. So there was a lot. Must have been a lot of produce. You mean you weren't you weren't in the fancy automatic milkers that you have today? All done by hand. All, all hand stuff. So that's a that's a lot of a lot of squeezing went on there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. One of the things, uh, just to change the subject for a moment, but I think it's all part of the history of, of the farms, especially, is the whole history of the Grange. Now, you've been very active in the Grange over the years. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand what the Grange was all about. Well, actually, it was started as a farmer's organization. And, of course, today, very little of it, but yeah. it, uh, that's what it went for years and years. But it had a very interesting ritual too, doesn't it? I mean, and there was there was a lot of substance to what it was about. You didn't just oh, sit around and chew the fat. There oh no! Well, uh, and of course, at one time there was a lot of legislation work done for farmers. And so, the Grange was active in promoting that. Very active. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it was a community gathering place too. Yeah back in the years gone by. So it was, you had a social life as well as a yep. practical life. Yep. You must have had an educational life along with it. There was a lot of educational. There was an educational program, uh, you know, for loan for going on to future schools. 
Yeah. And things like did that. Did the 4-H grow out of that? I mean, you did a lot no, of young No, I think the 4-H grew out of them from themselves. Did it? But you had a lot of education for the young people, too. I mean, you brought, oh, yes. You brought young kids along. Yes. I remember that. And uh, I guess in some areas where they had county fairs, the Grange was very active in supporting young people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I was privileged to come to some of your meetings. I didn't understand all the ritual that went with it, but I, I know there was something, there's some that went with it. There was a lot of ritual work to it. Yeah. So, and it's very, ritual work is very well associated with the Masons, too, okay. I think, mm -hmm. as I went through it, because yeah. I've been there some 75 years. Yeah. Now, people don't, many people wouldn't understand that there is a Grange Hall here in town originally, and it's where, you want to describe where that is? It was a church. The Grange bought it. I used to know what year it was, but I can't tell you now. And until we had a disband that couldn't keep it up anymore, it's gone back to a church. Right. It's on Milk Street. It's on Milk Street, just between the firehouse and the rotary. Yep. Right on the right-hand side. Yeah. Yep. So. It's a beautiful building. Now, just going back to the farms again for just a little bit, Bob Hennessy had cows, didn't he? But, no. no. I never knew him to have cows. And I horses. always had horses. Horses. Horses, okay. Paul Brown, out on no, Upton Paul Road. Brown, sure. He had a few. Uh, he did Brown Swiss, didn't he? Didn't he have some? No, he had um, Scotch Highlands. Scotch Highlands, okay. Got I didn't include him either. Yeah. No. We talked about the Fay Farm and the Poskets and Jack Straw There's, and the Gold. Of course, we had the uh, Lyman School. Yeah. Had. Uh, Fairly sized herd of cattle and did a lot with pigs and vegetables. Yeah, I knew a little bit of the history of that because we had Westboro State, Grafton State, and, and Lyman School all had farms. Yep. And they didn't try to duplicate exactly because they traded product back and yep. forth so that most of the, the expense for the school came out of the farm. The farms raised... Well, they went away from that. They did. They, some, somebody decided they could buy it cheaper than that. And so well, I remember when that argument went on in the legislature, but uh, yeah. I never agreed with them. Well, if they want to go back and take a look at the history things, the cost of keeping a kid involved in Lyman School back 100 years ago was peanuts compared to what it costs now to hold on to a delinquent kid. Oh, yes. Cause it's thousands and thousands of dollars now because nothing is produced. They got to buy everything. Buy everything. Make everything. Have everything's made for it. And it's, it's getting. Different. I think my personal opinion, it's getting worse because they're getting rid of these and they're doing different things. Yeah. Now they're going to close the state hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows whether it's good or bad? Well, I'm not going to get into that <coughs> because when Lima School closed, the whole idea was to move kids off the grounds to close institutions. But the irony is now they're. There are probably 150 kids back at the state hospital living in buildings over there that nobody knows about. Yeah. Just build a brand new girls' unit over there. I, mean, I know they did. Now they're going to close everything up. Close her up. But they're going to keep those open, I think. It's wow, they've got to. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Brand new buildings like that. That's right. Well, you've done a remarkable job, Norm, and, and reminiscing here a little bit about it. I'm just looking at the list to see if we missed anybody that I know anything about. Uh, <clears throat> I'd be very interesting to read the book. Yeah. Because the amount of people you're talking, uh, there's got to be a lot of farms back before my time. Yeah. We didn't mention the Emery Farm on Chestnut Street. I didn't. I was Orchards. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one I missed. That's a beautiful piece of land. Yeah. Beautiful piece of land. Yeah, there's still some land up there, too. That's right. Yeah. The, yeah the there's a couple coming. of horses there around yep. different places like that. Yeah. yeah, I've been over this list quite a few times <laughs> trying to figure out the ones that I forgot. Yeah. Do, do we mention Mar a family named Marshall? Eldon Marshall, Charlie Marshall. Arch Street? Way out in the Fisher Street. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to think where... The, so that's almost to the, to the Grafton State Hospital then? Well, if you got to get down to some other roads okay, there. Okay, but... Do you know where Beansy White is? Sure. 
Well, that's the five. Oh, is that it? Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. And Gribble, did we mention them? On I mentioned them. You? Okay. I would post you on Lyman Street. And Beeman, you mentioned them? Roger Beeman? Well, he never had any cows. Well, I don't know. It just said on Maynard Street. Roger Beeman. On Maynard Street. Yeah. Well, that's not one that I can remember. And because we're going way back in this book, it's, she's talking yeah. about 1865, so there may be places. There was uh, a Maynard farm there on Maynard Street, and what they ever did there, it was before my time. Hmm. I don't have that one. That was just before the bridge. Did we say Baldwin? Did we talk about them on Moore Street? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, you done, you done Carl that. Henry run that farm for years. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Great. And then John Breedlove went up there after that. Yeah. So. so as you look back on the town, do you miss the farm life here? I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. I do. It was a hard decision to quit, but uh, you can't go on alone. No. And you can't compete with the wages of Bay State. Yeah. Anybody else yeah. like it? Yeah, not in farm. Yeah, yeah. But the, it, over across the the country, do you think that the small farm is just dying off? It's oh, like the it's, fire, small farm has already died off. The big corporations. There's no, there's no, very, very few small farms now. Yeah. And I just read a a news article the other day out. I forget where it was, but it was out in the Midwest. They're looking for an application to build a farm for 5,000 milking cows. Wow. And they're, trying to, they're fighting it because of the smell and all the connections that go with it. That's right. Air pollution. Air pollution. That's right. And I can see it's groundwater pollution. And yeah, yeah. I can just imagine what 5,000 cows... <laughs> I've been on a farm up in Vermont place. <laughs> where they milked 1,100 yeah, yeah. every day, yeah. and uh, that was a lot of... <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the day of the small farm is gone. It's a shame. It's a shame. You just can't exist. Yeah. So. I remember a number of, not a whole lot, but a number of kids that we, we allowed to go off to work on farms around the neighborhoods. And several of those kids ended up out in Springfield and farms out there, and, and that's, that was their salvation. Yeah. That's the one thing they, knew, they could do, and they well, were good laborers. You get know, you know, all the way out to, and to Holyoke, Northampton. Yeah. A lot of vegetable farms, tobacco farms, right. and, and uh, there was a lot of handwork yeah. involved. Yeah. Well, I can remember some of the high school kids working. Uh, at Barbarians, Marshalls, where they raise quite a few vegetables. Yeah. The handwork of weeding and doing that. Yeah. Uh, even Ralph France used to have quite a few Lima School boys. They would weed there. Yeah. And uh, things like that. There was quite a few around town that that did that. Well, I always felt we it was can go way back in the uh, late twenties when the Patients from the state hospital, which were free, they'd walk over through the fields and they'd hold potatoes for a few cigarettes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Things that, that... That was the bounty of the day. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. They'd come over just to get a few cigarettes That's and they'd right. hold potatoes for your whole con. Yeah. They'd make the cigarettes down at Norfolk. It was called Airline Cigarettes. Oh, yes. Blue pack. I've heard about that. <laughs> I've heard about it. If you were a smoker, they straighten your pipes right out. They, yeah. they were strong cigarettes. Yeah. So. Well, I think I miss it a great deal. I was allowed when I was growing up to work on a farm. And it was, I didn't choose it at the time, but my father felt it would be a good idea if I did it. And I, I, I consider myself a relatively hard worker now, but primarily from the, the experience on the farm. You discover that that kind of labor was a lot of fun. Hard work, well, but you felt good. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know which, but we grew up in the Great Depression. I milked two cows before I was even going to school. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. 
go out and gather the eggs and feed the chickens. Yeah. And but the values you guys developed in those days are the things that this country is missing right now. And oh. it's, it's got, we've got to pull it back. We've got to get those values back. Well, Hard after work. I got rid of my cows, I was maintaining it for them for chase paper. Yeah. And some of the high school kids that come in never had any respect for being on time or things like that. Yeah. It's not like when we grow up. No. No, a cow doesn't wait for you, does it? No. No. It wants to be taken care of when it was time. And when it's, you got the hay to get in, you get it in whether it's yeah. before it rained. And yeah. And before they get the weeds, before they kill everything. That's right. So. Yeah. Well, Norm, I want to thank you very much for reminiscing with me a little bit and helping this community understand the rich well, heritage. Well, I'd very like to read that book sometime. Well, I'll on let you have it. Take it. On back of the years of Westwood before I yeah. came over. Chris has done a nice I've job. I've only been here since 1920. So. <laughs> you beat me. <laughs> well, thank you, Norm. I appreciate it. Thank you well, very much. Thanks for coming in. I didn't know what to expect, but I've had a good time you chatting. You did well. You did good. You did good, as they say. I've had a good time chatting. Good with for you. you.